hi everyone welcome back to my youtube channel in today's video i will be talking about cms final rule for hospital inpatient prospective payment system and long-term care hospital prospective payment system for fiscal year 2024 let's get started on august 1st 2023 the centers for medicare and medicaid services or cms issued the fiscal year 2024 Medicare Hospital Inpatient Prospective Payment System and Long-Term Care Hospital Prospective Payment System Final Rule. Background on the Inpatient Prospective Payment System and Long-Term Care Hospital Prospective Payment System. CMS pays acute care hospitals with a few exceptions specified in the law for inpatient stays under the Inpatient Prospective Payment System. Long-term care hospitals are paid under the Long-term Care Hospital Prospective Payment System. Under these two payment systems, CMS sets base payment rates prospectively for inpatient stays, generally based on the patient's diagnosis, the services or treatment provided, and the severity of illness. Subject to certain adjustments, a hospital receives a single payment for each case depending on the payment classification assigned at discharge. The classification systems are for inpatient prospective payment system, we have Medicare Severity Diagnosis Related Groups or MSDRGs. And for long-term care hospital prospective payment system, we have Medicare Severity Long-Term Care Diagnosis Related Groups or MSLTC DRGs. The law requires CMS to update payment rates for inpatient prospective payment system hospitals annually and to account for changes in the prices of goods and services used by these hospitals in treating Medicare patients as well as for other factors. The index used to do this is known as the inpatient prospective payment system hospital market basket. The inpatient prospective payment system or IPPS pays hospitals for services provided to Medicare beneficiaries using a national base payment rate adjusted for a number of factors that affect hospitals costs, including the patient's condition and the cost of hospital labor in the hospital's geographic area. CMS updates long-term care hospitals payment rates annually according to a separate market basket based on long-term care hospital specific goods and services changes to payment rates under inpatient prospective payment system the increase in operating payment rates for general acute care hospitals that are paid under the ipps or inpatient prospective payment system successfully participate in the hospital inpatient quality reporting program and are meaningful electronic health record users is 3.1% this reflects a projected fiscal year 2024 inpatient prospective payment system hospital market basket update of 3.3% reduced by a statutorily required 0.2 percentage point productivity adjustment. The update reflects the most recently available forecast of the price proxies underlying the market basket, including projected increases in compensation. Hospitals may be subject to other payment adjustments under the inpatient prospective payment system, including payment deductions for access readmissions under the hospital readmissions deduction program or HRRP, payment deduction of 1% for the worst performing quartile under the hospital acquired condition or HAC deduction program, upward and downward adjustments under the hospital value based purchasing or VBP program. The increase in operating and capital inpatient prospective payment system payment rates will generally increase hospital payments in fiscal year 2024 by $2.2 billion. In addition, CMS projects Medicare disproportionate share hospital or DSH payments and Medicare uncompensated care payments combined will decrease in fiscal year 2024 by approximately 957 million dollars 
This change reflects the CMS office of the actuary's use of updated estimates and data in its projections. CMS also estimates that additional payments for inpatient cases involving new medical technologies will decrease by $364 million in fiscal year 2024, primarily driven by the expiration of new technology add-on payments for several technologies. Changes to payment rates under long-term care hospital PPS or prospective payment system. For fiscal year 2024, CMS expects the long-term care hospital standard payment rate to increase by 3.3% and long-term care hospital prospective payment system payments for discharges paid the long-term care hospital standard payment rate to increase by approximately 0.2% or $6 million due primarily to a projected 2.9% decrease in high-cost outlier payments as a percentage of total long-term care hospital prospective payment system standard federal payment rate payments. After consideration of public comments, CMS made modifications to the methodology used to determine the long-term care hospital PPS high-cost outlier threshold for discharges paid the long-term care hospital standard federal payment rate and finalized a threshold that is notably lower than in the proposed rule. Continuation of the low-wage hospital policy. CMS will continue temporary policies finalized in the fiscal year 2020 inpatient prospective payment system slash long-term care hospital PPS final rule to address wage index disparities affecting low-wage index hospitals, which includes many rural hospitals. At this time, CMS only has one year of relevant data from fiscal year 2020 that CMS could use to evaluate any potential impacts of this policy. As CMS does not have sufficient data from the time period this policy has been in effect, CMS believes it is appropriate to continue the policy while we obtain and review additional data. Rural Emergency Hospitals and Graduate Medical Education This rule also includes changes to graduate medical education or GME payments for training in the new Medicare provider type, the Rural Emergency Hospital or REH, which was established by the Consolidated Appropriations Act of 2021 to address the growing concern over closures of rural hospitals. These changes help support graduate medical training in rural areas by allowing these rural hospitals to serve as training sites for Medicare GME or graduate medical education payment purposes after they become rural emergency hospitals. Health equity impacts. The rule also advances one of the goals of the CMS framework for health equity 2022 to 2032 to more explicitly measure the impact of their policies on health equity. As part of their growing capabilities in this area, CMS is adding 15 new health equity hospital categorizations for the fiscal year 2024 inpatient prospective payment system payment impacts. Moving forward, one of the priorities of the CMS framework for health equity 2022 to 2020, 2032 is to expand the collection, reporting, and analysis of standardized health equity data. As additional data become available, CMS plans to incorporate it on an ongoing basis into their impact analyses. Changes to the new COVID-19 Treatments Add-on Payment or NCTAP. In response to the COVID-19 public health emergency, CMS established the new COVID-19 Treatments Add-on Payment or NCTAP for eligible discharges during the public health emergency. In the fiscal year 2022 inpatient prospective payment system slash long-term care hospital PPS final rule, CMS finalized a change 
to their policy to extend NCTAP through the end of the fiscal year in which the public health emergency ends for all eligible products to continue to mitigate potential financial disincentives for hospitals to provide these new treatments and to minimize any potential payment disruption immediately following the end of the public health emergency. As the public health emergency ended on May 11, 2023, discharges involving eligible products will continue to be eligible for the NCTAP through September 30, 2023, that is through the end of fiscal year 2023. The NCTAP will expire at the end of fiscal year 2023 and no NCTAP will be made beginning in fiscal year 2024, that is for discharges on or after October 1st, 2023. Changes to new technology add-on payment or NTAP policies for fiscal year 2024. To increase transparency and improve the efficiency of the NTAP program and application process, CMS is finalizing its proposals to 1. Require NTAP applicants for technologies that are not already FDA market authorized to have a complete and active FDA market authorization application request at the time of NTAP application submission and 2. To move the FDA approval deadline from July 1st to May 1st beginning with applications for fiscal year 2025. CMS believes these policy changes will improve the completeness of submitted NTAP applications, improve CMS's ability to provide a fuller analysis to identify eligibility concerns and allow the public the opportunity to more knowledgeably analyze applications and supporting data to provide public comment. Physician-owned hospitals. For a hospital to submit claims and receive Medicare payment for services referred by a physician owner or investor or a physician whose family member is an owner or investor, the hospital must satisfy all of the requirements of either the whole hospital exception or the rural provider exception to the physician self-referral law commonly referred to as the Stark Law. To use the rural provider exception or the whole hospital exception, a hospital may not increase the aggregate number of operating rooms, procedure rooms, and beds above that for which the hospital was licensed on March 23, 2010 or in the case of a hospital that did not have a provider agreement in effect as of March 23, 2010 but did have a provider agreement in effect on December 31st, 2010, the effective date of such agreement, unless CMS has granted an exception to the prohibition on, except, on expansion. A hospital may request an exception to the prohibition on expansion of facility capacity using the process established in the calendar year 2012 hospital outpatient prospective payment system and ambulatory surgical center payment system final rule. In the fiscal year 2024 inpatient prospective payment system slash long-term care hospital PPS final rule CMS is revising the regulations to clarify that CMS will only consider expansion exception requests from eligible hospitals clarifying the data and information that must be included in an expansion exception request, identifying factors that CMS will consider when making a decision on an expansion exception request and revising certain aspects of the process for requesting an expansion exception, reinstating with respect to hospitals that meet the criteria for high Medicaid facilities, program integrity restrictions on the frequency of expansion exception request, maximum aggregate expansion of a hospital, and location of expansion facility capacity that were removed in the calendar year 2021 outpatient prospective payment system slash 
ambulatory surgical center final rule this is it for today but please stay tuned for the video i'm creating on the portion of this final rule that pertains to the quality reporting program of hospitals thank you for joining hope to see you next time bye now